Okay, so uh, good, um, good morning or good afternoon, uh, everybody there. Uh, so my name is uh, Richard Standen. I'm from Course Merchant, and uh, thank you to, for, to, to, to Brian at Remote Learner for organising this and uh, for the uh, brief intro there. Um, I have uh, just fired up uh, a PowerPoint very, very briefly uh, on my screen. Um, I'm uh, assuming that everybody can see that, um, so uh, I know that Brian uh, will let me know uh, through the chat or whatever if, if, if uh, for any reason my screen is not being seen. Um, so uh, very, very briefly, um, I, I run a company called Course Merchant, and uh, just to put this into context, uh, Course Merchant is uh, an e-commerce uh, capability, an e-commerce catalog. Um, I guess you can call it many things, uh, an e-commerce front end, e-commerce store, uh, e-commerce catalog, um, but um, in a nutshell, it's a, a storefront where you can list your uh, courses that you're going to sell, and uh, we've connected it, or we will connect it uh, to your remote learner Moodle. And uh, what uh, the upshot will be is that uh, people will be able to browse your catalog, choose uh, one or more courses to purchase, uh, check out, pay, and then seamlessly be uh, registered, enrolled in your Moodle environment and able to pass straight through and uh, start taking the courses. So that's in a nutshell, and I'm going to take you through some uh, bits and pieces. Um, let's uh, just quickly review uh, the agenda. Um, these are um, uh, th this is the agenda as specified on the uh, webinar sign-up form, so uh, let me just uh, talk to you very, very briefly through, through these uh, three core elements. Um, first of all, uh, we're going to have a look at using Course Merchant to uh, create a, a catalogue. Um, we're going to have a look at a couple of existing Course Merchant stores, um, so some of our existing customers, and uh, look at uh, how they've chosen to create a catalogue, uh, some of the structural elements of their catalogue, so some of the decisions they've taken around uh, how they've chosen to structure their catalogue and allow people to navigate and to browse through their catalogue in order to find uh, the appropriate courses that uh, they wish to sign up for. Um, Whilst we look at the structure of the catalogue, we'll also think about the design of the catalogue. So um, I'll pick up on that fairly uh, early on. So that will be uh, around about uh, the creating a shop window uh, for your learning. Um, then what I'll do is uh, I'll go uh, then into um, my demonstration course merchant store where I can put a live or real uh, sale through. And uh, that will be the course registration item there. Um, I'll, I'll put a sale through, and then I'll look at uh, how we can put a free uh, sale through. Um, and uh, we'll uh, pick up on how, uh, how uh, the value of an item in the, pro in the catalog, the value of a course, uh, could be zeroed out, either through, for example, the fact that it was set up at a zero price, or maybe a voucher code has allowed you to zero it, uh, or, or, or some other discounting mechanism. So we'll have a look at the, uh, the, the mechanism by which uh, a learner or a prospective learner can browse your store and then register into your Moodle environment. Uh, and then lastly, we'll have a look at some of the data uh, that results, uh, and I'll log into a, a back-end area within the system where we can have a look at some of the data, uh, and, and, and perhaps talk briefly about the upsell process, um, i.e., uh, you've sold course 101 to uh, an individual, uh, and uh, how, how might you identify you know, which individuals have purchased course 101, and uh, how might you tell them about course 102 um, and other products that you may well have. So, uh, so that's uh, very briefly uh, what we're going to look at, um, uh, creating the catalog, the catalog, uh, the design of the catalog, the structure of the catalog, and then some registration into courses, uh, both paid for and free. Uh, and then uh, looking at uh, some of the data. Uh, as we go, please feel free to tap uh, questions into the chat window. Uh, if I miss them, uh, I, I apologize. Uh, we will pick them up at the end if I miss them on the way. Um, and Brian uh, has uh, promised to draw my attention to any particularly pertinent ones uh, related to what it is that I'm talking about uh, as we go along. Okay, so uh, um, I'll, I'll talk for probably about uh, 35 to 40 minutes. That'll take us up to about the 45 minute mark, uh, and then we'll have the last 10 to 15 minutes or so uh, on questions. Okay, so uh, let me uh, close my slideshow there and uh, pick up on a, a couple of uh, stores. Okay, um, 
Okay, so uh, here's um, what, uh, the first thing we're going to look at then is the, is the cataloging. Um, and what you can see immediately in front of you um, is uh, actually it's not uh, Course Merchant, actually this is one of our customers' websites. Um, and, and in fact, um, for many of our customers, uh, one of the first things that they need to think about in terms of where they're going to put their catalog is, is where does the catalog sit within the overall uh, architecture of their set of web uh, web assets, whether that's a, a corporate face, a public facing web page, or, or the LMS, um, or, or whatever. Um, and this particular site that we're looking at right now, the Go Safety Compliance Center, uh, is quite a nice one um, because it, it it puts it into context quite neatly. So this is the customer's main public facing web page. This is not their store. And can you see that straight there in the middle, we've got a purchase safety training link that I'm uh, hovering over. And this actually is the link to their catalog. So let's click on this link. So I've clicked on the purchase safety training link. And, uh, and I've drilled down now uh, into their course merchant catalog. And the very first thing you'll notice is that it looks identical. Okay, um, so um, uh, you, you, you're now uh, seeing a, a, a design matched course merchant catalog. We've applied the uh, design theme from their main system uh, to this. Um, when we get started with the typical course merchant catalog, uh, we can apply your uh, Moodle theming to that catalog, or we can apply your uh, main public facing uh, website theming. Um, often, perhaps, those will be the same. Okay. Um, this is a catalog then. Uh, I can browse this catalog by category. Um, so uh, we'll pick up on, uh, on, on how we might categorize a, a catalog in a few moments. Um, notice that we've got some products here that I could drill down into. So for example, I could drill down into uh, Fall Arrest uh, and have a look at that. Now before I go into that, I'm actually going to bring up uh, another customer store. Okay, so let's bring up another customer store. Okay, um, so this is another one of our customers, um, and uh, you'll notice immediately that uh, the, the look and feel of their system is entirely different, um, but can you see that over here on the right-hand side, they've got a communication skills area within their catalog, so let's click on that, and we now have uh, a series of products that I can choose from. And uh, you can see all of those listed there. So let's just think about this from a, a cataloging perspective. Um, these, these, these are products or, or courses uh, that uh, you're selling. Um, you'll build them, or will, you'll set them up uh, within a course merchant catalog, and each one of these products or courses is linked directly against a Moodle course uh, within the LMS. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that the items in the catalog can actually be linked against multiple Moodle courses. So there's nothing to stop you from creating what we call bundled products in the catalog that enroll into multiple courses uh, within the Moodle environment. Um, but I'm kind of like going to hover on this screen for just a moment. Um, so this is a, a catalog. You've got down the left-hand side multiple categories. So if you've got lots of different courses that you're selling, you may well categorize those. Um, you can see that this particular customer is categorized, for example, via uh, bullying and harassment, uh, change management, uh, etc. One of the nice things about the setup of this particular uh, category within the, within the catalog is, is what I call this pick and mix capability. So can you see that um, by selecting multiple courses uh, within this uh, interface, uh, I could click on Add Selected, and uh, I could add all of these to the cart, and uh, as a learner, or as a prospective learner in this case, um, I can uh, uh, instantly uh, enroll myself on multiple courses via the catalog uh, within the Moodle system. Um, so, so that's slightly different then in structure to the first one that we looked at, uh, which is this uh, image-based uh, uh, format. So, so again, uh, when we work with a customer uh, with their Moodle, um, we we do one of two things. Uh, first of all, we work with the uh, with with you to make sure that the look and the feel and the design of the system is appropriate. But then we work with you on the catalog to make sure that the kind of catalog that you end up with is appropriate. So whether it's image-based, so for example, I can drill into one of these, and uh, and now I'm into the product description page where I might uh, choose uh, uh, to to to, uh, to to buy, uh, or whether it's pick and mix based. Uh, like this. Let me just go to one other customer very, very quickly. Um, I like this store um, because uh, their catalog is quite, quite comprehensive. And again, this is just normal course merchant you're looking at in front of you. Um, 
again, the, the design has been applied that's appropriate to the customer's requirements. Um, but if I drill down now into one of the categories uh, within their catalog, for example, health and safety, uh, if you watch the right-hand side where it says catalog over there, that will push out. There we go. And uh, we've now got the subcategories within the catalog on display. So, um, so I need to move on from the, from, from the cataloging element uh, a little bit, um, but uh, the important thing then is that uh, with the course merchant uh, e-commerce system, uh, we can create a, a catalog that allows you to reflect the structure of the courses that you wish to present uh, to, to the big wide world and allow people therefore to browse the catalog uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a fairly uh, straightforward manner and then obviously choose uh, to register onto uh, one of the, the, the courses that uh, you're wishing to sell. Okay, so um, so so in a nutshell, then uh, a quite a sophisticated cataloging capability. Uh, and but the important thing is that we'll work with uh, with you to make sure that the appropriate catalog structure is set up uh, that reflects your particular uh, needs. Okay. Um, I won't stop and ask uh, if there are any questions because there's uh, too many people in the room to, to do that. But I will, like I say, I will keep my eye on the on on the chat window uh, there. A um, couple of points just to pick up on actually very, very briefly uh, on the cataloging. Um, obviously, we will uh, work with it with any calls to merchant customer to make sure that the catalog structure, uh, etc., is appropriately built out. But it's also worth noting that course merchant generates an XML feed of different areas of the catalog, and some of our customers like to pull those feeds into uh, their other website systems, or even indeed into uh, Moodle HTML blocks. So, um, as well, well as allowing a customer to browse your courses for sale via the catalog, you can actually also pull those products, pull those categories uh, of products through into other website systems as an XML feed, uh, and, and we will then push all of the, the uh, data, uh, updated data as you change courses, etc., uh, into a specific location. So there's a quite a lot of flexibility there over how you might choose to display products uh, in different locations. Okay. Um, so, just to, uh, uh, I won't bring uh, the agenda uh, back up again, um, but uh, one of the first things we were going to talk about there was uh, the catalogue, um, so, uh, so we'll now we'll move on and uh, have a look at some of the course registration uh, capabilities. Um, now, let, uh, to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up um, a uh, demonstration course merchant store because you can't really put uh, uh, registrations and uh, sales etc uh, through um, a customer store um, well spend a lot of money if I did um, so uh, so here's my uh, a fairly typical uh, course merchant demonstration environment and uh, I'll show you a couple of bits and pieces on here related to uh, registering uh, onto a product so I'm browsing my demonstration catalog um, Again, it's worth noting that uh, like many e-commerce systems, Course Merchant has got some fairly standard features, for example, featured courses, related courses, uh, etc. Uh, we've also got a, a waiting list uh, capability, so you'll notice that this particular product is, uh, is full. So if I did go down into uh, basic chemistry, sorry, um, I'm just going to log out. I've just noticed that I'm actually logged in uh, there. There we go, logging out. Um, so if I did drill down into uh, basic chemistry, um, I can see that uh, I might uh, join a waiting list. Uh, there you go, you can see that I, oops, I'm not highlighting that very well, but uh, you can see that I might choose to join a, uh, a waiting list and, uh, and, and then later on I can be informed um, that, 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 the, uh, the, that the item is now available. Anyway, let's uh, come back to the, to the, to the store homepage and uh, I'm going to choose to purchase organic chemistry. So uh, let's buy that. Okay, so I'm going to register on organic chemistry. Um, you'll notice that there's the related courses, and you'll notice up here uh, I've got uh, 12 seats available. So uh, on this particular product, we've uh, indicated seat inventory. That will count down, and if it sells out, then uh, again, uh, the, the waiting list, the wait list will kick in. Uh, by the way, uh, inventory is optional. Um, uh, a lot of our customers selling face-to-face -face courses uh, will use it. Uh, a lot of our customers selling purely e-learning courses won't, um, but it's, it's there as an option. Uh, it's currently $300, although I can see that I've got multi-seat discounting uh, that will kick in. Um, I'm going to draw your attention to that $300 because in a few moments that $300 will change. Okay. Um, 
so uh, um, so so let's uh, uh, in fact I'm, I'm going to make a change right now um, I'm just going to call up uh, an account that I'd already created um, as I um, I could um, uh, check out and create a new account but uh, to save a little bit of time today um, I've actually already created an account so uh, I'm just going to quickly log in give me a moment while I just uh, quickly log in as uh, Neil Armstrong there we go and uh, just drawing your back attention back to that. Remember, organic chemistry a few moments ago was three hundred dollars. Uh, it's now thirty. So um, when we go through the registration process and we start looking at free, um, one of the things to bear in mind is that uh, one of our capabilities is the ability to uh, set variable pricing based upon Moodle LMS profile fields. So what that means is that um, if you've got relationships with specific partners or you've got existing members. Um, there's nothing to stop you from uh, enabling, for example, a 100% discount for specific partners or, or, or existing members, and, uh, and that price uh, will go down, straight down to zero. Uh, in this particular instance, um, I've set a 90% discount for somebody who is, uh, who is a member. Um, so um, it's quite a neat feature, and, uh, and we'll pick up on that uh, in a few moments. But anyway, let's, uh, let's choose to buy organic chemistry. Okay, so I'm going to buy organic chemistry, and uh, I, like I say, I have 12 seats available. Let's click on buy now. Okay, and uh, you'll see that uh, the membership discount uh, is is there, and I could uh, could check out uh, at this point. Um, notice that I could apply a voucher code uh, if I wanted to. So let's uh, apply a voucher code there. Um, I'm actually going to log out one more time, and I'm going to just draw your attention back to the fact that the price has now changed back to 300 and now I'm going to buy again only this time I'm going to create a new user account okay so this time the the discount is now no longer there and now I'm going to check out and create a new user account as we go so just to reiterate there I'm going through the registration process, I'm purchasing an item in the store, and uh, in a few moments this will create a user account into my Moodle environment. Uh, if I've already got a user account, uh, as the example with Neil Armstrong a few moments ago, uh, I might well get variable pricing based upon the Moodle profile field that I already have. Anyway, um, I've popped in a voucher code. Uh, we've got single use, multi use, and unlimited use discount codes. Uh, let's check out. Like most e-commerce systems, if I have an account, I'll log in or I'll create a new account. So let's create an account. And this time, I'm going to be Ben Nevis. There we go. Give me a moment. I'll just tap this in. It won't take me long. That's okay, right. There we go. So I told you it wouldn't take too long. Okay, so I just want to dwell on this screen for just for a couple of moments. So I'm purchasing a course, and uh, I'm creating a new user account as I go. So, so this is the registration flow. The thing to bear in mind with Course Merchant is it doesn't have its own user database. We hook directly into the Moodle user database. So, so when I click on Create Account, I'm actually going to be creating an account directly into the Moodle. Moodle user database. Um, now, all of these data fields will pass through, um, and these will uh, populate uh, the uh, Moodle uh, profile fields. Uh, if you wish, we can collect additional data fields at this point, which will also pass through uh, into the Moodle environment. So let's click on Create Account, and uh, it's now creating the account in Moodle. Um, give it a moment or two while it does this. So, moment or three. Here we go. Um, it, it has actually invoked uh, our membership discount again, mainly because uh, I've used an email address that has been set as a discount to the email address. Um, so we've got, like I said, we've got flexible profiling uh, discounting there. Uh, anyway, um, this is where I choose to pay. Um, I'm actually going to go through for free because it's a demonstration, um, but uh, I could, of course, choose to pay by credit card. And uh, I could, of course, choose to pay by invoice. Um, pay by invoice is what we call a delayed enrollment payment method. So um, if, if somebody chooses to pay by invoice, um, what will happen is that uh, Course Merchant won't 
make the enrollment into Moodle. Um, instead, the, uh, the the customer will receive an email that says, "Thank you. Uh, this is how to pay. So uh, you know, this is where to send your check, or this is uh, how to uh, you know wire your funds." Um, and once the funds do come in, the store owner would then approve the order, and then the Moodle enrollment uh, would complete. Um, but for now, um, it's uh, for free. Uh, I'm going to agree to the terms and conditions. Um, notice here we've got a checkbox that says, are we registering on behalf of someone else? So you can run course registrations then for people um, that are on behalf of another. So for example, I'll give you an example. We, we have a driving school that does theory courses and typically it's the parents that purchase on behalf of the children. So, so, uh, so typically then a parent would check that box, they're using their credit card, but of course they want to indicate that the learner is someone different. Um, another uh, situation is an administrator within a company who were using the company credit card but wants to allocate the seat to a, one of the individuals uh, within, the, within the company. Anyway, hey Richard, uh, Brian. conditions. Hey, we have a question. Hello, Brian. Um, sure. Does does a merchant have to set up their own merchant security credentials, or does your program provide all that? Um, um, well, let me just explain the way that uh, the system works. So, so, so your uh, the, the owner of the store will have an account, for example, with PayPal or Authorize.net or WorldPay, SagePay, CyberSource, etc. Um, and uh, we have uh, a, a, an integration to those payment gateways. So, so what will happen is that um, the, the owner of the store uh, will uh, input their, uh, we, we have a, a payment gateway module where we will put the credentials for uh, the, uh, the chosen payment gateway and that will mean that then um, the, the store system will connect to the PCI compliant payment gateway uh, in order to transact uh, the, um, the the actual you know the the, the actual payments okay, okay. Um, it, I, I, I I can see the question there so uh, if, if 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 that uh, questioner needs more info I can I can pick up on that a little bit later on um, but uh, but yeah we, we we connect to PCI compliant uh, payment gateways um, and we we connect to, to multiple um, uh, in order to, to to make that transaction okay um, so let's uh, let's go through for free. Let's agree to the terms and conditions. Let's click on proceed. Let's give this a moment or two. Okay, so this is my exit screen. Uh, course Merchant is uh, giving me uh, my uh, access um, invoice data, um, but the important bit is this link here. Can you see this link here that says click here to access your training now? Um, so this is a single sign-on link directly into the Moodle uh, LMS. So if I click on this link now, I'll pass seamless through into Moodle in a moment or two. Here we go. So I've passed seamlessly through into uh, into Moodle, and uh, if I look, uh, this is our Moodle system that's connected to this particular store. If you look top right, I'm now logged in as Ben Nevis. Okay, and uh, if I uh, clicked on the Ben Nevis link there, uh, I would be able to view uh, the profile data that the system passed through. Um, there's the product or the course that I purchased, the Organic Chemistry 101 course. Um, so a couple of things have happened then. So, so Course Merchant has taken me through a registration process. Um, I've registered uh, on the course, um, and uh, Course Merchant has, in the background, Course Merchant has created the account into the Moodle environment, and then I've checked out successfully, and, uh, and then I've single signed, used single sign-on to pass straight through uh, into the Moodle environment. Now I'm going to drill down into this particular Moodle course. Now please bear in mind there's only one course listed here currently. Okay, so you've only got Organic Chemistry 101 here. Now I'm going to drill down into the course. So now I'm, I'm operational now within Moodle. Okay, um, and uh, give it a moment or two. So, so I'm operational within Moodle and uh, we've got some uh, bits and pieces in this particular course. But the important thing is at the very bottom can you see that I've put purchase module two here? So um, I mentioned earlier on that you don't have to use the catalog as the only mechanism by which you might choose to buy a course. Um, 
Course Merchant generates what we call buy now code, and there's nothing to stop you from placing that buy now code into uh, another environment. And in this particular instance, I've chosen to place that buy now code into uh, the Moodle environment. So um, now I've deliberately set it to appear, but of course you could use the selective or conditional release capability of Moodle to only make that appear when somebody has actually completed the course. Now, I didn't do that because it's a demo and I haven't got time to do a course. Um, so, so the purchase module two link. Now, this link, this is an instant buy now link, which is going to bypass the catalog and take me straight to checkout. So as a registration flow now, this is very, very quick. So watch this. I'm going to click on the purchase module two link. I've, take, I've passed module one, I've gone straight through and uh, clicked on that link. Notice it's taking me straight to the shopping cart. Um, I know I'm in a logged in state. If I click on checkout now, because I'm in a logged in state, it's able to pre-fill all of my learner data, or all of my uh, profile data into the checkout. I'll agree to the terms and conditions one more time. Click on proceed. And now I'm back at the exit screen in the store. Click on here to go back into my Moodle environment and instantly notice any moment now. There we go. Hey, instantly Richard, notice that a question. second. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, can Course Merchant manage how long learners have access to a course for review purposes after this course after a course is complete? Yes, it can. Um, let me show you that in actual fact. Um, if I go into a product editing screen, um, so let's find organic chemistry. I, I can't see it there immediately. So let's choose advanced biology. That will do me. Um, one of the settings that we have within the admin interface is a duration setting, and that's duration in days. And we can pass through uh, into the Moodle environment. Um, the, uh, the, basically, we, we, we can set the unenrollment date, uh, and Moodle will then uh, manage that uh, uh, unenrollment. Okay. Um, let me come back uh, to uh, the store homepage. Okay. Um, so, uh, just to just to, to, to come back a, a, a quick uh, stage. Um, so, um, we had a look at the catalog. We had a look at the different structurings of the catalog that we could put together, um, uh, whether that's multi pick and mix or icons. We had a look at the design match there. Um, we had a look at the fact that within the catalog you'd have SAF categorization, uh, etc. Um, so one way or another, you're now displaying your courses for sale uh, within the catalog. Um, we then came into my demonstration catalog environment and we purchased organic chemistry. And having purchased organic chemistry, I then uh, seamlessly passed through into the Moodle environment in a logged-in state, and I was able to commence studying. Um, and then what I then did uh, was I used the link within the Moodle course, so you can embed purchase links or buy now links directly into a Moodle course. Now you might place those anywhere. You might place those in quiz feedback. So somebody has passed a quiz and now you want to direct them to the next module uh, to buy. Or maybe they they haven't passed a quiz and part of your feedback at that point is, well, hey, why don't you click on here to buy access to our revision materials, uh, it's our further study resources, uh, etc. So I used that purchase now link that was embedded within the Moodle course environment to come back uh, to complete another registration uh, to go on to uh, another course. Uh, whilst doing that, uh, we picked up on uh, a couple of discounting mechanisms, uh, the ability to discount by Moodle profile, okay, so that $30 you see there uh, is only $30 because Course Merchant is looking at the Moodle profile field and setting a discount based upon that. So let me just show you uh, what I mean. Um, so I'm currently logged into this store, or well, more correctly, I'm currently logged into Moodle. Uh, course Merchant is looking at Moodle and uh, identifying the profile field that applies a discount. Now, the current discount is 90%, but let me change that and you'll see how the pricing changes. So let's go into Admin. Let's go into this area here called Member Discounts. Okay, uh, And you can see that I've got uh, three different levels of discounting for different, uh, different profile types. Um, I've got a 90% there. Let's, uh, let's change that. 
Uh, let's set that at 100% uh, discount and uh, let's update. And now uh, I've just got to find the window again. Here it is. So currently I'm at $30 on this particular course, but I'm going to refresh this screen uh, now and you'll see the price go down to zero. So, uh, so let's click on that uh, refresh button and uh, scroll my screen back down again. Lost my mouse. There we are. And you can now see that the product pricing uh, has gone down to zero. So um, you have the ability, like I said before, to apply a variable price discount uh, based upon a Moodle profile field. And if you wish, you can bring pricing straight down to zero. And in fact, we have quite a lot of customers that use Course Merchant, not necessarily to sell courses, but to enable a free registration uh, process by which individuals can effectively self-register onto courses. So, so you can use Course Merchant as a registration engine into your Moodle environment, not because you're selling, but because you want to have a more efficient self-registration capability uh, for your, uh, your learners. Uh, a typical example might be to, to run a MOOC. Um, so let me show you a customer that's doing something similar. Um, so uh, this is University College London. And uh, I'm just, uh, just going to come back to their homepage. So give me a moment. While I just... So this is uh, UCL in the UK. Um, they're using Course Merchant. Um, and uh, they've got some featured courses on their, their main homepage. Um, the one that I wanted to, to show you is that uh, some of their products are indeed free. So uh, you can see that uh, they've got a couple of free items there on the homepage. Um, so um, if I drill down into, into one of these items, so let's go into the more button. Again, so this is all course merchant. Uh, they have a particular look and feel to the way that their uh, product description pages are set. Um, but can you notice that they've then got this free registration. So, so far in terms of registration, I've talked largely about uh, uh, discounting and paying for registration and going through into the Moodle environment. Um, but like I said, there's nothing to stop you from enabling a free to register capability for a number of different reasons. One of them might just be an efficiency in terms of registering learners into your LMS. Um, let's click on this free to register button. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go too far uh, in this particular environment, um, but I do just want to show you that uh, if, if I, let's be somebody entirely new. Let's be uh, Henty. I do need to use an email address. Now, I won't go anywhere far, further than the next screen. So let's click on uh, log in there. Now, so Course Merchant then, can you notice that there's no requirement to pay? There's no information about values uh, here. So, so with Course Merchant, uh, if you enable the free registration capability, what we can do is we can present your learners with a cut down registration process. So if they're paying money, we take them through a checkout and obviously we have to capture certain pieces of information. If they're not paying money, we can take them through a cut down uh, registration process and actually this is the only screen they need to complete. Now I won't complete this screen because I don't want to create yet another account into the UCL environment, um, but uh, if I were uh, to complete all of these fields, agree to the terms and conditions, create my new account, then Course Merchant will create that account into the Moodle environment and um, and, and then, then from then on in, of course, I'm then operational uh, within Moodle. So again, um, in, in terms of our agenda, uh, the second item on our agenda there was to pick up on registration. Um, so we've been through uh, both a free and a paid registration process, and we've looked at how we can zero the pricing on a product in the store, perhaps by profile discounting. Um, we could also zero pricing, of course, by voucher code. So uh, there's nothing to stop you from creating a 100% discount coupon code and using that to zero pricing uh, on, the, on a store. Okay. Um, I'm going to move along a little bit. Um, I'm just um, keeping my eye on uh, some of the chats, uh, not chats, the, the, the questions. Um, and uh, I, and then what I'll do is I'll make sure I finish quickly enough uh, within the next 10 minutes or so, so there's time to pick up on some of uh, those questions coming in. Um, there's two more things that I'm, I'm going to uh, show you, though. Um, the first of them, and it's still picking up on registration. Sorry. Um, so, so it's still picking up on uh, registration. Um, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm just going to put some value back into my store. So let's change that 100% discount to a 90% discount. 
and uh, let's go back to that store home page and refresh. So uh, now I've got some value back into my store. There we go. So uh, let's uh, let's have something at, for example, thirty dollars. Okay, let's let's buy some more seats. So let's go back into organic chemistry. I can see I've got eleven seats available, which is good because I'm going to buy a bundle of them. I'm going to buy five seats. So still dealing with registration, but now we're going to look at the the problems associated or, or, or the possibilities associated with multi-seat registration. Okay, so let's buy five seats. Let's click on buy now. I'm back into the checkout flow. I could redeem a voucher code. I won't at this point. Let's check out. So I'm now buying five seats. Okay, um, I'm already logged into Moodle, so the single sign-on is allowing me to pull through the existing uh, account data. So that's fine. I'm in a hurry now, so I'll accept all of that. Let's click on proceed. Okay, now you're going to see something slightly different. Uh, do you remember on a previous purchase that this said to access your training? But now it says to manage your licenses. So when course merchancies and multi-seat sale take place, it routes into an area we call manage licenses. So uh, let's click on that to go into that manage licenses area there. Okay, and uh, the important thing now is I've, I'm in a, a self-service seat allocation utility. So let's just think about the context very, very briefly. I'm the purchaser, and I've purchased multiple seats. So maybe I'm a training manager, and I've purchased multiple seats on behalf of my employees. So the course merchant system has taken me through into this manage licenses area, and if you look, you can see that I've got five seats purchased and five remaining. So currently, I haven't used any up. But can you see I've got a link here that says click here to add students. Now, remember, I'm the training manager doing this on behalf of my employees. So let's, uh, let's have a student called John. Yeah, John Norris, J-N. And give me a moment while I just tap that in and, and click on enroll. And uh, what will happen is uh, Course Merchant is now, uh, you can see I've got a success message. The student was enrolled. Notice that the number of seats remaining has diminished to four and that number purchased obviously has remained at five. So this is a self-service utility where I can register my employees onto the appropriate Moodle course by simply using up the seats that I purchased earlier on. I can log into this environment over time. I don't have to do all of this now. I might log in next week or next month. Um, I can recharge my seats. So if that four diminishes to zero, and obviously I can't do this process any longer, I can go back into the store purchase more seats and then continue with that registration process. Let's do one more. Let's be uh, Helen. There we go. And uh, again, I'll just do this fairly fast. Uh, it's just uh, I like to get a couple of names in there um, simply because uh, for, for the next bit uh, you can see a little bit more info. So see this link here that says list previously enrolled students. So if I click on that link now, <clears throat> Um, I've got a summary of registrations made or license allocations uh, that have been used up. Um, just to thinking about this for a moment, Course Merchant is creating these user accounts into the Moodle. If the user account already exists, then Course Merchant will simply add the new enrollment to that account. If the user account doesn't exist, then Course Merchant uh, will create the account. It's worth noting that if the learner account already exists in Moodle, and is already enrolled on this course, Course Merchant won't waste a seat. Um, it, uh, it, was, it, 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 it will recognize that that learner is already on the course, and it won't use up one of the seats uh, there. OK, so very, very briefly, uh, just finishing off on that registration part, we've looked at uh, single seat registration paid. We've looked at single seat registration free. We've looked at the cut-down registration process that UCL, for example, are using, which cuts down on uh, the, the amount of you know, screen uh, entry that needs to be done when something is free. We've looked at mechanisms by which a product might end up free. It might be that you put it into the store at a zero price. It might be that you created a profile-based discount that was a 100% discount based upon a Moodle profile field. It might be that you created a voucher code that was a 100% discount voucher. It doesn't matter. The important thing, though, is that there is a free to register uh, 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 workflow there. Um, and then, it, again, still in terms of registration, 
um, we've looked at the multi-seat uh, registration process by which, uh, for example, a training manager might buy multiple seats on behalf of employees and then self-administer those seats uh, as they need. The last thing, very, very briefly to finish off on on this piece, is that uh, um, uh, that uh, you know what I forgot what I was going to say there. <laughs> It'll come back to me. Um, it's uh, something on the on, on the managed licenses uh, uh, there, but uh, it'll come back to me, and I'll, I'll I'll say what it was in a few moments. Um, okay, so just thinking about the third point on our our, our agenda. Um, the third point on our agenda uh, was um, about upsell. So, um, in order to be able to upsell, of course, you need you need data. Um, and uh, one of the features of, uh, of Course Merchant is the fact that uh, we, we have uh, a, a CRM integration, really, and, uh, and, we, and we capture lots and lots and lots of data. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go into uh, another uh, area. Okay. And uh, let me just uh, see if I can just bring this back to the home page very, very quickly. So uh, I'm logged into uh, – I'm not logged in. It's kicked me out. So I'm nearly logged into uh, – a CRM interface, uh, which is uh, storing some back office course merchants, um, and uh, so I'm now into a CRM system, and, and I've only got a couple of minutes to show you this. So, but can you see that in there is a is a learning menu, and in there we have, uh, for example, uh, course sale, uh, uh, course sale items, etc. I'm not going to dwell uh, on all of those now. What I'm interested in is this one here that says course attendance. So. Uh, the course merchant uh, integrations and uh, CRM layer um, allow us to query Moodle as well as to look at the sales order data. So if I click on course attendance, uh, let's uh, let's see who uh, is on a particular course. Uh, I'm just going to clear the search and just uh, do that. Um, so I've just cleared the search. Okay, so can you see we've got search course attendance? Um, let's do a quick uh, search by course. Now, I've been buying into organic chemistry, so let's have a look at who's in organic chemistry. So let's, uh, I've got it in here somewhere. There it is, organic chemistry 101. So let's, uh, I'm just going to search organic chemistry 101. And now I'm bringing up data. Uh, all of these individuals are people that uh, have enrolled onto organic chemistry 101. And uh, in fact, can you see you've got first access, last access, and uh, some grade data as well in actual fact. We're capable of querying uh, learner activity data as well as sales order data. That's something that's uh, worth focusing on just for a second. Um, so we're capable of pushing all sales order data through into this reporting interface, but equally we're capable of pulling all learner activity data out of the Moodle environment and putting the two together. That means that you can both query where a sale and a learner originated from, but you can also see how they're doing. And from an upsell process, this access to data is crucial. Uh, instantly, I could, uh, I could maybe sort on grade. Um, I could pick up on individuals that have, uh, have passed. Actually, I could do lots of clever searches, but I'm not going to get into all of that now. But instantly, I can see that Ben has, has scored 97. Brian uh, has scored uh, 100. Uh, Enid has also got 100. Maybe I'll take those three individuals and push them to a target list. So this is the CRM capability that allows me to create a, a mailing uh, campaign where I might introduce these individuals to the next course that I'm going to suggest they buy. Um, or, or maybe I'll just go straight to a quick email. Um, so. Um, in order to be able to upsell, uh, obviously, you need access to data. We have that data of, available to us, and, uh, I, and, and although I've only shown you one particular uh, feature of this environment, I think you'll agree that uh, th th this ability to query both how a learner is doing within the Moodle environment uh, as well as uh, the sales order data means that uh, I can very uh, easily move into a, an upsell process and look to position additional products uh, to these people. Okay. Uh, very, very briefly, let me just show you a, a quick report uh, that we've got in there. Um, items, uh, let's have a look at items sold. Um, and uh, let's have a look at items sold over the last uh, 30 days, uh, for example. Um, let me just change my filter on here to 30. There we go. And so uh, I can have a look at a very, very quick uh, report uh, on on the on the sales that have been coming in uh, over the last 30 days uh, and what have you, and again uh, we can drill down to, to to the individual level, derive a report, derive an Excel file or whatever, 
and then start sending upsell you know, uh, information to, to, to people. Um, I'm going. I, I'm aware that I've talked quite quickly uh, there at the end, um, but uh, I'm going to draw it to a close now because um, we've got about 12 minutes left before the hour is up, and uh, it was my plan to see if we could uh, pick up on uh, some some questions. Um, Brian, is 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 that okay if I now uh, draw that uh, to to a close there, and uh, I'm going to fire up the question pane and uh, see if I can answer uh, any specific. Uh, questions. So let me just. Yeah, uh, this would be perfect. We do have a, a few questions we haven't addressed yet. Okay. Um, so I'm having skimmed through these. So Tammy, for a specific test course that never costs anything, can you default free for that test course uh, alone? Um, I'll tell you what you would do, Tammy. Um, is when you create a voucher code you can constrain that voucher code against a particular item in the store. Um, now, we have a, lo a lot of our customers, when they're working with partners, will do this. And um, actually, it introduces something else that I didn't really mention. Um, within the catalog, you can have multiple categories. Each of those categories can carry different branding. And we do have customers that have different incoming landing pages for different partners. Um, and they can deliver different products to different uh, uh, partners because those are the products that are being delivered out on those different category pages and the branding then is is appropriate to that incoming partner. The reason I'm talking about that is that um, you can constrain the voucher codes to both a category and a product level. So you could create voucher codes specific to a particular partner. Um, uh, and so they could only be redeemed by individuals from that partner company purchasing items on that particular partner category. Um, uh, sorry, that's a bigger answer than you were looking for there. But to pick up on your question, yes, uh, you know, to, to, can you default free for that test course loan? Simply create a voucher code constrained specifically to one product, which is a test product. Um, by the way, you can also put items in the store that are active but hidden. So you can hide them from the catalog, leave them active, and uh, so again, from a test perspective, that would work very nicely. It also works nicely for social media marketing. Maybe you're going to push out a tweet um, that is to a particular product um, being marketed through those channels. Um, and uh, you know, for one day only, you're going to give a great offer, maybe through Groupon or something like that. Um, and uh, you, you, know, you want to hide it from the rest of the catalog because it's only the people that are coming through those social media channels that are going to get advantage of buying that particular item. Okay. Um, I, I, I'll, uh, we don't have a shopping cart on our website at this point. Would you use your product provider the shopping cart? Could? Yes, it would. I know Georgina, Georgiana has left there, but uh, yes, it, it would. Uh, can course management manage how long learners have access to the course or review purposes after the course is complete? Hmm. Can course management manage how long learners? Probably not. Uh, course merchant can only manage how long a learner has access to the course. Uh, course merchant doesn't. Other than that, course merchant doesn't really do much around you know whether the course is complete or not. So so probably not. That I think probably a Moodle uh, thing. When someone creates a new account within CM, how is the email address validated? Quite a few Moodle originals have never. Um, the, the the email address um, course merchant doesn't use uh, the normal. Um, uh, Moodle uh, email address validation routine. So, um, so, 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 so that isn't going to be a problem. Uh, so, for Moodle, Moodle who never received their validation emails for one reason or another, that simply isn't a problem. Um, the, 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 the validation of the email is, is as part of the checkout flow. So, they have to enter it twice. Um, and uh, but assuming that they enter it twice correctly, uh, actually it doesn't even matter if they answer if they enter it twice incorrectly, they're still going to get their login details on the exit screen. Obviously, they're not going to get their login details um, sent to them by by email. Um, but um, but 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 it, the the loss of an email is not going to affect the registration. Uh, on the cut down registration screen, can we include optional profile fields we deem required? Yes. Um, just Larry, just so you know, whenever we start a new course merchant build, we go through an implementation process, and part of that implementation process is determining what are the uh, profile fields that are required. Um, and uh, and uh, yes, we, we we would work for you to make uh, sure that, uh, that 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 was there. Um, how does this work for face-to-face -face courses, um, Laura? Basically, um, when a product is added to the course merchant store. You do one of two things. You either uh, link it against 
um, a Moodle course or you don't link it against the Moodle course. Obviously, if you link it against the Moodle course, Course Merchant will go through the process of enrolling a learner into that course. If you don't link it against the Moodle course, Course Merchant uh, won't attempt to do that. But also, and quite importantly, Course Merchant will send a different email. Obviously, your learner doesn't want an email that talks about logging into uh, the Moodle system. So we have a, a different default email and a different default exit screen text for a non LMS, non-Moodle course, purchase. And so that's how you might uh, sell a face-to-face -face class, or it might be how you sell a CD or a book or something like that. Um, in actual fact, even if you're selling face-to-face -face courses, we still advise our customers to link that product to a Moodle course. Um, because into that Moodle course, obviously, you can put your sign-up information, your you know, attendance information, your, your maps to the class, etc. But also, and quite importantly, the Moodle gradebook then becomes a participant list. Um, so, so it's still, even, even though it's a face-to-face -face class, um, we do still actually advise people to still link to a Moodle course uh, because of some of the benefits that, that Moodle brings uh, in that regard. I see that uh, Tammy has answered the next question. Is this a program I'm plugging or paying? Yeah. Um, is there a way to incorporate an admission process into course merchant? Um, an admission process. I, I'm wondering whether you mean an approval process. So uh, somebody uh, is attempting to register, um, but they're not actually allowed in until the uh, until that uh, learner account has been approved. Um, in which case, the answer is 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 a kind of like uh, a conditional yes. We do have a, an, an approval capability, um, but it, it's it's fairly um, blanket. It, it, so 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 it depending on on just how granular you want your admissions process to be. So that's something that um, uh, we we should probably pick up on uh, in an email exchange uh, after the call. Um, the next one has been answered. Okay, follow on to partner for product. Does this product support managing courses for different clients that want their own brand from one Moodle presence? Um, it, it, to a small extent, does this product support managing courses for different clients? Um, I think probably the thing to bear in mind is that Moodle is capable of displaying different branding for different categories within the Moodle environment. So, um, so using a combination of differently branded categories within the course merchant store with differently branded categories for different partners within the Moodle environment means that probably you can get a certain amount of brand presence uh, for a, a different partner. Um, there's a couple of provisos there. First is that the actual course merchant checkout is generic. We only have one checkout. So, so the branding for that is going to be the main store branding. Um, so so, so we, we, again, that might be something that uh, you might want to pick up with me um, or, or remote learner via um, uh, email uh, after this. Uh, course by brand, it's used by learner. Um, sorry, I'm just reading these uh, very, very quickly. We're using a course of remote millions of people, but we have many more using instance remote learner planning to offer CM store from each user site wide. Uh, Larry, I know which uh, who you're talking about there. Um, um, I, I guess the, the, the second part of your question is, is, is perhaps something that uh, to pick up on uh, w with remote learner uh, post uh, this call, and uh, something that uh, you know we're happy to jump in a call with perhaps uh, subsequently. Um, can course merchant? I'm just reading the previous one there. Can course merchant access to course by bandwidth used by the learner? I'm not 100% sure I, I, I get that one. So, um, so, so please feel free to uh, send me through an email. Um, okay. Um, other than that, I have a feeling that we've answered all of those questions. Um, and uh, yes, so and we're 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 just about uh, picking up uh, about two to three minutes uh, early. So uh, if there's any further questions, please feel free to tap them in. Um, otherwise, um, I will uh, uh, draw to a close uh, there. Um, but uh, just um, let me just. Um, uh, just say thank you very, very much for taking the time to come into uh, the uh, webinar. I uh, appreciate that people are busy wherever they are, and uh, it's uh, very grateful that you've come in and uh, stayed and listened, and I hope you uh, found that useful. Um, but uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll stop now. I don't know whether Brian wants to come in uh, uh, just to, 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 to finish off there. 
um, but otherwise uh, I know that uh, the, there's a recording and I'm sure that uh, Remote Learner will make that available to folks um, if, if required. Yeah, we'll send, we'll send an email out to everyone that registered and we'll have the recording link in the email. Um, it will also be posted on our Vimeo channel, so if you're following our Vimeo channel, you can, you can pick up the live stream there as well. Um, if, if anyone has any additional information or, or needs on Course Merchant, feel free to check out our website. Um, we do have an e-commerce section on there that talks about our, our Course Merchant integration. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining.